It's nearly midnight, but in a quiet street not far from Chester Zoo, a dedicated keeper is still on duty. Hand rearing a lion cub is a round the clock job, and head keeper Alan Woodward is feeling the effects of three weeks of sleep deprivation. The night feeds are quite exhausting, I think it's one of the worst parts, but obviously, I mean, when you see how well Tejas is doing, um, it's well worth it, but when you're working as well, it, it is very tiring, extremely tiring. Tejas is one of two lion cubs saved by Chester Zoo when they were neglected by their mother, Asha. Tejas got stronger with every passing day, but the team lost the fight to save his little brother. The tragedy was difficult to deal with, but Alan didn't give up on Tejas, and his commitment has paid off. Sometimes Tejas wakes me up because I, sort of, I sleep next to him, but more often than not, the alarm goes off about 10 minutes before his actual feed. But um, as he's getting older, he knows the timeline and he knows what's coming up, really. Tejas needs to be fed every three hours, night and day, and monitored constantly. The task has had a huge impact on Alan's personal life. When you hand an animal, I mean, it's a huge commitment on your behalf. I mean, you, you don't have any social life. Your whole life revolves around the animal because, I mean, you're a surrogate mother to the animal, really. There you go. It's finished. Hold on. There you go. Let's wipe your face. People think, oh, you know, it's so nice to be hand rearing a lion, but they don't realise, I mean, you have to do everything the mother does. I mean, apart from feeding, you have to do the, the, the toilet side of things, you have to clean him up, you, you have to do all the washing for, for the bedding and things like that. And by the time you sterilise the bottles, prepare the next feed, in between you perhaps only get, say, an hour and a half to yourself, and that's it. Since I've been hand rearing Tages, I've had about two nights off, and, Dave Hall, my second in charge, when he's taken him for those two nights. So, so I've had a, a little bit of a rest, but you do <clears throat> start sort of panicking a bit, and uh, there's a lot of texting going on, um, just to make sure that everything's OK on both sides, really. All the hard work has strengthened the bond between the two. Eventually, they'll part company. But for now, Alan enjoys the rare privilege of watching Tejas grow. We've all been through quite a lot with him, really. I mean, over over the past three weeks, and it's difficult not to get attached to somebody like this. I mean, it's, it's extremely difficult. Um, you do get attached. I mean, you, you can't avoid it. And and I think the worst part is going to be when he goes. I mean, he's going to have to go to another zoo anyway. I mean, for his, for his own good, and start start a new breeding program there, which is what it's all about. I mean, that's that's our job. Bedtime now. Tomorrow's go. a big day. Tejas will make his debut in front of the local media. He'll need a good night's sleep if he's to be at his best, and so will Alan. Yes, it's bedtime for me now. I'll just uh, clear up again, and then uh, hopefully in about 10 minutes I'll be asleep. Early the next morning at Chester Zoo, the daily feeding and routine checks on the animals are underway. Senior keeper James Andrews and student Louise Allen want to check up on one of the jaguars. In the wild, jaguars would rarely survive beyond 12 years old. Salvador has done well to make it to the ripe old age of 16. But James is concerned that he's not fully fit. For the past few days, he's been looking a bit lethargic, a bit bloated, off his food a little, a bit stiff, but he does look stiff anyway with his age. James isn't sure what's causing Salvador's symptoms, so he's carrying out some basic tests. What we're going to do now is weigh him. We've taken a, a, a faecal sample and a urine sample. We're going to weigh him. We're just gathering information at the moment, decide what to do about it. Weighing a big cat may not seem like an easy task, but James has plenty of experience. He's shut out of his den at the moment. We're going to go in there, we're going to put some weigh bars down, a piece of wood on top. The weigh bars are connected up to a, a reader, and then when we let him into the den, he comes onto the, the board and the reader reads, and that's how we get his weight. One board, complete with muddy jaguar footprints. Um, Salvador's easy to weigh. Sophia next door. You can't do it because she she just flips the board off and tries to eat the weigh bars. Salvador, 
he's usually OK. He hasn't tried to eat any equipment yet. Here we go. So he's just come in, he's having a look around, it's a bit different. He has seen this setup several times already, so he's not going to be unduly worried, but he might be a bit cautious. Now, we're not in any particular hurry. He's not going to lose or gain weight in the next sort of 15 minutes or so, so it really doesn't matter if he spends a bit of time. But usually you find within the first five minutes or so he'll get on. If he starts trying to pull it off like that, I'll... Chicken, please. Thank you. A chicken distracts Salvador from removing the board and lures him onto it. OK, watch that monitor. OK, what are you on? What are you on? OK, that's um, 74.5. 74.5. Salvador weighs more than usual, perhaps because he's bloated. But it's not a big difference, so James is encouraged. Right, now I want to get him off it. Ah. Right, I'm going to chuck a chicken in. It's nice to think you're giving them a reward. Really, it's just to get him out of the den so I can get the way bars out, but it's nice to think of it as a reward for doing the right thing. Of course, Salvador's got no idea that's what it is, but hey. Okay. Chicken goes in. And that is how you weigh a Jaguar. Dun, 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 dun. That looks OK, so hopefully we'll get his joints sorted out, um, see what the vets think, but we'll keep on monitoring faecal and urine and so on and see how we go. Regular checks will detect any major problems, but for now, Salvador is looking good for his age. Chester Zoo's tropical realm is the largest tropical house in the country. As part of the morning routine, keeper Jeff McLeod is putting the rain into its tropical rainforest. Some of our birds like, like a shower in the morning with the hose, with the VIP bathing. Uh, she's the female wrinkled hornbill. She likes a, a shower with the hose, and she's quite comfortable just to sit in the, in the sprinkle and have a bath. There are over 50 species of hornbills in the world. Five of them are represented in the tropical realm, the largest being the rhinoceros hornbill. We're just hosing the uh, rhinoceros hornbill every now and they love to leaf bathe. So whenever they want to wash, you've got to hose all the plants in the aviary and then they'll fly into the leaves and they get absolutely saturated just from doing that. And it's, you know, you wouldn't believe how wet they actually get from just leaf bathing. With them being a, a canopy species, they, they, they live more or less in, in treetops and they very rarely come to ground to get water, so it, it, it's the, the best way for them to keep clean. It's one of the most relaxing parts of the day, just in the morning times, giving the, giving the birds a bath. And it seems the hornbills enjoy the daily deluge just as much as Jeff. Over at the elephant house, it's training time for Raman, Chester's Hello, baby elephant. That's a good boy. Raman good is boy. nine months old, and under the watchful eye of his teacher, specialist keeper Alan Littlehills, he's proving to be a star pupil. You're a clever little thing, aren't you? Raman Chunk. Okay, a good boy. Raman's already oh, learned that good behaviour oh. earns sugar lumps. The last couple of weeks since we were here last, what I've tried to do with him is, is, is basically get his confidence. He was new for me, he was a new baby, so he's now, I'm the goody man now, he's pretty, pretty happy with me. He's a little nervous of the cameras, but he, what I can do now is, when I call him to me, I give him a reward. OK, but he can only come when I want him to come. He can't come on his terms, he comes on our terms. Raman, come here. Come here, Raman. Good boy, Raman. Raman, trunk. He just takes the trunk and reward him. That's a good boy. What we want to do now is, is, is start leading him. So he'll, he'll follow me around. And we're going to get him to this point here so we can restrain him, as we do with the adult elephants. Then we start training in the leg lifts for doing foot care when they're a little bit older. Get them to lie down so he can wash them, get desensitised the ears. We're already getting to his ears very, very nicely already. Also, we'll let you touch him, see? Grab his tail, around his tail. You've got to be able to touch them all over, really. Good boy, good boy. Raman is proving to be a quick learner. Good boy, good boy. Male elephants tend to pick things up a little bit quicker. Uh, part of their salty lifestyle, they're very black and white. 
Yes, no, yes, no. They haven't got all these other issues that the girls have. So you tend to find that young male elephants tend to pick things up better. I'm not going to say the bulls are smart on the cow. You know, this is a, you know, this is a 400 kilo animal. You know, it's a heavy animal. It's very, very small, but it's very, very powerful. But he's got to do what he's told. So this day, he's just getting used to it's been around him. See him picking the back leg up? Alan ticks him off. No. Well, you've got to, you've got to stop that, because that means he'll give you a kick. What they will try and do, even a little, especially a little male elephant like this one, they'll try and push their luck a little bit with you. He'll come up, he'll be really nice, he'll just start leaning on you. He'll just start doing this sort of thing. That's got to be stopped straight away. OK, he needs to know, it's like, a, it's like training a dog, really. They need to know what the parameters are. They need to know that you're in charge of them, not, not the other way around. And all the time, you've got to stay very, very calm around them. If you get slightly stressed up, they'll pick it up straight away, and you've lost them completely then. He's gone completely AWOL on us now. Raman earns another black mark when he interrupts the keeper's morning work routine. He's got to realise that standing there, no, they don't want him there. He's in the way, get away, go away. It's not appropriate for him to be round there when somebody's working because it's not safe enough. The only place he's going to get any, any goodies is off me. Raman, this is the mother as well, see how calm the mother is with all this? You've also got to remember that you're working around her baby. So you've got to stay nice and calm with her, because she'll react to anything that happens to the baby. So the baby gets, gets freaked out, she'll panic, and everybody else will panic as well. Because this is a family unit, so it'll go right through the whole unit. Come here, little boy. Good boy, Raman, good boy. As you see, he's quite happy with us. And you're a little boy, aren't you? Yeah. Like most little boys, Raman likes to show his rebellious streak. But Alan is confident that he'll grow into a well-mannered adult. At Chester Zoo's Chimp Island, the inhabitants are looking forward to lunch. But they know they'll have to work for it, thanks to specialist keeper Neil Ormerod. Well, the dinner time feed is slightly different from the morning and evening feeds. What we do is we go right up on the roof and basically just empty it through the roof and it spreads as it falls down. It's got about 40 feet to fall. They've all got their own likes and dislikes, just like we have. You know, I'd say oranges are Farthing's favourite food. Boris often goes for pears or bananas. Uh, occasionally, if it's a special treat for them, they'll have grapes, and he always goes for those as well, but uh, it's hardly surprising. Everybody likes grapes. They certainly get the five fruit and veg a day, that's for sure. OK, that's dinner ready. He's going to go and give it to him now. Distributing the chimps' food from the top of the building provides them with variety and mental stimulation. It's not bad having your dinner 40 foot up, upside down, is it? Got babies up here as well, two-year-olds, and it's, uh, it's setting nature to them. They'll keep them going for a few hours now, that. Won't it, Lizzie? For Neil, feeding the chimps this way has one slight disadvantage. I think it infuriates me how agile they are compared to how unagile we are. You know, it's... Uh, when you're doing work in here, you know, getting ladders and harnesses and everything else just to put a rope up and they go straight up, it's... Uh, you get a bit jealous of them almost. The chimps have the freedom to move outside when they've collected their food. Spreading it out this way, it stops uh, them begging, because we used to throw it onto the island, um, but it encouraged, doing that way encouraged the chimps to beg and also encouraged public to copy us and feed the chimps as well. And obviously, you've got to monitor everything they have or else they're going to be ill, uh, get overweight. Uh, it can cause fights because invariably people are going to give it to the cute little chimp at the front and the big old one at the back is going to take it off him, so it's going to cause a fight. The chimps seem to enjoy it. They get a good feed as well, so I think everyone's happy. They're all out now. I think they've probably finished all the dinner time, so they're just having a little siesta. Sun's shining. Youngsters are playing around a little bit. 
Looks like there's a mother's meeting going on over there. And just chilling out. Nice and quiet, that's how we like it. Headkeeper Alan Woodward is playing the proud parent. Tejas's story has sparked interest from the local media and reporter Fred Tolbert has arrived for an interview. This is a very rare lion. It's an Asiatic lion. Now, they're only found now in one place on Earth. We'd have to fly a long way to a national park in India, the Gear National Park, and that's the only place where these fantastic creatures are found. The media attention gives Alan a great chance to highlight the problem facing Asiatic lions in the wild. These are so endangered, far more endangered than, than African lions. Were they once found all over Asia? One time, though, they covered a lot of, uh, of, of Asia. These are the actual lions you found with the Romans in the, in the Colosseum. Oh, really? Yes. They use Asiatic lions? Very much so, yes. Yeah. So, the, the whole area they've come from has decreased and decreased and decreased. Now they're only found in, in a small reserve in, in, in Western India. So this is great news for Chester Zoo? This is brilliant news for Chester Zoo. And the lions? And the lions, of course, yeah. yeah. I've come here for, oh, 25 years for Granada Reports, and every time it's different. It's always an uplifting story. It is actually the first time I've seen a lion cub as close as this. The cub looks all right, but Dad, no. Um, he took a particular dislike to our cameraman, I can tell that. Imagine that's not unusual, you know, but... <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about The him? interviews continue uh, throughout yeah, the day. Is, uh... There's been a lot of interest in him from, from a lot of areas, really, which, which is good, because, I mean, it's a nice story. I mean, we've, we've saved his life. Um, he wouldn't have been here if we hadn't acted when, when we did. And he's doing very well. He's had a good night's sleep. Um, he's actually starting to walk a bit now as well, which is quite exciting, and uh, everything's looking great, yeah, and it's, uh, it's all turned out quite well, really. <laughs> the Flanagan family from Surrey are preparing to cross the moat to get to Lima Island. They successfully bid for the opportunity to go behind the scenes with head keeper Andy Lenehan. I went on eBay and it was Chester Zoo and they were giving away a day um, at the zoo with lunch and to feed the lemurs on Lima Island. And I thought it would be a very nice 21st birthday surprise for my daughter, Nicola. Uh, it was my birthday last month and this was a surprise until yesterday, so I'm very excited. Well, we're just going to uh, take these four lucky people onto the Lima Island and feed the lemurs, so hopefully it'll be a good day for jumping on people's heads and stuff like that and getting, getting people covered in banana. But while Andy knows what to expect, the Flanagans are much less certain. Apprehensive, I think, is the word. <laughs> <laughs> a bit scared about crossing the moat and falling in flat on my face. Right, ready? The water's not very deep, it's only up to about knee height. There's a metal grid under the water that shows you your way over. You just keep going straight. With the moat behind them, the family can focus on the lemurs. And the lemurs are quick to focus on them. <laughs> Don't try and feed them anything but banana to start with. They've got a very sweet tooth and they'll eat all the banana first. So, There's your bucket of ammunition. There's your bucket of ammunition. If we just go along a bit and then sit down on the bank and then they'll come to us. They're quite friendly then. You sort of spread yourselves out along the bank and. You should keep feeding him, he'll stay on your, your back. Their paws are so soft, they're not sharp at all, are they? They're like sort of silk pads. Very well mannered. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly big mouths. <laughs> they're very hungry. <laughs> yeah, they always act like they've never been fed for months, but I assure you we do feed them twice <laughs> twice a day. Noisy eaters. <laughs> they keep waiting their turn to have the bananas. It's very sweet. He's getting on with my bald head quite well, too, this lad. Must be a bit confusing for him. People come over and, and feed them and that, and obviously they, they have the initial reaction that you did sort of 20-odd years ago when you started doing it, so it's, uh, 
it's, it's good to see people doing it and, uh, you know, sort of remember how you felt sort of all those years ago doing it. No, I've like never that. done anything like this before, <laughs> but hopefully sometime I'll be able to do it again. <laughs> The animals enjoy it, the people enjoy it, so everyone's a winner, really. <laughs>